Welcome to the Julie Lawton Living Podcast, the place to get advice, tips, and tricks to building the life and luxury home of your dreams with 30-year business owner, designer, and builder, Julie Lawton. It all starts with a good plan. This is Julie Lawton Living. Hello, everyone. It's Julie. Welcome back to the Julie Lawton Living Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about acting as your own contractor and how it can lead to disaster. (laughs) Okay, so I want to explain the definition of what owner builder means. If you actually go to the contractor board website, there's a big red letters on there that says owner builder beware. Because if you act as your own contractor and you pull a permit owner builder and you run the job as the owner, you're taking on the exact same responsibility as the contractor. And whether you know it or not, you're legally responsible, the same as a contractor. But what happens is the owner doesn't do what the contractor does legally because legally the subs all have to have the same insurance as you, a million dollars liability. Legally, the subs have to have workers' compensation for all their employees. You can't just say, I have no employees and fake it. You, Everybody's got to be under workers' comp insurance. So if you go ahead and proceed with owner builder and then you hire these subs, which of course are not licensed, they're not insured, and don't carry workers' comp, and their worker doesn't get paid or falls off a ladder, guess who's paying for all the medical bills for life and their and, and their back wages is you. And no one's going to tell you they're not licensed and insured or because they're going to probably lie or you're not going to ask because you don't know. So the point is you need to be very careful as owner builder because Usually when you're owner builder, you're trying to save money, you think, or you think maybe you just can't handle anything being done without you micromanaging it because you maybe you'll think you're safer. But I think the ultimate reason that people do owner builders, they think, oh, this is easy. It's my house. I'm going to make all the decisions and I'm going to save money because I can do this. Well, it quickly turns into disaster because A, I mean, not to sound terrible, homeowners don't have any experience with architecture, design, engineering, and contracting. They may think they're good project managers, but they don't see the big picture. They don't have years of experience on construction. And again, they don't know the state laws and how it works with the legalities of simply having workers come and how to ensure their their safety legally. So that's the biggest problem. And every time I hear about owner builders, um, clients that have jobs going on, you know, I hear about it because they fall apart and something bad happens and they call me to help rescue them. So every time I hear it, it's because they didn't follow the rules that we follow. I mean, my, my subs, they sign a subcontractor agreement and I see their insurance and I see their workers come and I verify everything day one that they're legally running their business. So, and our liability insurance match. So um, there's a whole process you have to go through. It's quite simple, but then again, it's not because, um, you know, it's um, owners don't know the the real laws because they're not licensed contractors. So that's my pet peeve is, uh, you know, hearing, I mean, it's not my pet peeve. It's just sad when you hear about all the failures in remodels because maybe someone's owner builder. And if you cut corners, boy, you're going to have problems. So in the very beginning of my career, when I was just a designer, I was called into a lot of jobs to come in because maybe the architect's plans didn't include custom kitchens. Maybe they didn't have any finishes picked. So in other words, the architect plans were incomplete because there was no designer. And then what happened is then the client I was working with was acting as owner builder because, you know, the husband's busy. The wife's like, I can do this. It's just my kitchen and my bathroom. So they got all these contractors running around with no license and they're not, and they didn't have any permits. And I'm like, oh my God. So the, the thing is when I walk into a job that has incomplete plans, no permits, contractors and subcontractors, not pulling permits, maybe they're not even licensed and insured. There's a whole bunch to undo. Cause what's the problem is when you're, you take over a job like that. The problem is the client's already blown their money because the contractors usually ask for money in advance, which is also illegal. And there's all these problems you can't undo, but you just have to take a leap of faith and, and cut your losses 
and move forward legally. So the sad thing is when I've taken over so many jobs where the client's money's gone and the plans don't work and we have to start over and there's no getting the money back in um, time wasted. So it's sad, but I can tell you probably 50% of the jobs I took, I had in the beginning of my career is because I took over to nightmare remodels. And, and so I have seen it and I've helped many people undo and move forward from a, a horrible experience um, financially and emotionally and uh, not to mention the time wasted. So I can't tell you how important it is to work with professionals day one. If you think you're going to save money being owner builder or save time, you're not. Every time you think you're going to save money, I can guarantee you it's going to cost more, take longer, and drive you a little crazy because it's going to cost more. Every time you say you're going to save money and you cut corners, you will be in for more money and more time because when you cut corners, something happens to the process and the quality. And if you skip steps, oh my God, it's not good. So, um, there is a plan, there is a process to this business. And I just can't say enough that how important it is to work with professionals day one, get your team in place. If you don't hire someone like me, you got to have an architect or a designer that knows how to draw plans. You got to have someone submit to the city. You got someone, to, you got to have five engineers if you're building a house from scratch or two or three for remodeling. And then you have to have a contractor. So there's a team you have to have in place and everybody needs to know their job stay in their lane and work together. So it's hugely important to work with a good team. Maybe you start with one, but you, but with construction, you got to have five to seven day one. So there's all the, there's other scenarios besides owner builders when the client thinks they're going to be the subcontractor or maybe do some of the framing or maybe do some of the, you know, the work, or maybe they're going to install the cabinets and maybe they're, could it just be the project manager? But again, it's not your job because even if you think you have the experience in the project management, you need, you may have it. I mean, there are some clients I know that actually professionally work as project managers and they're great. That's different because they actually work in construction and I have those people as clients. Um, you know, they, they know how to do the project management, but they're not the architect. They're not the engineer and they're not as skilled as the contractor because of the experience of the, the, the work. So it's in, in, in injecting yourself into the project as one of the subs or, or the actual project manager, it goes back to the same thing as the general contractor should have more experience than you. And so you you need to rely on the professionals with tried and true experience and, and who see the big picture and watch out for you. Because if you're doing it yourself, you're not really watching out for yourself either because you're kind of putting yourself as possibly the target for f failure because you need someone to watch out for your best interest and, and professionals. That's our job is to watch out for your best interest and oversee the big picture because of our knowledge and experience. We know what's going to happen if you do this and this and that. Mm -hmm. And the homeowner tends to be single minded on and selfish, maybe that they're going to do something to benefit them or save them money, but you don't know the ripple effect of that. And it's huge. And I see that constantly. It's a selfish decision to be your own project manager or maybe work on the job because you think you're saving time and money, but you're not, you never are, you know, unless you're actually a framer or you're actually a cabinet installer, that's different, but I don't recommend it. I work, I recommend working with professionals who pro will pr protect you from the bad outcome. So the, pr the, the biggest thing about contracting and, you know, being the architect, being the interior designer and the contractor is you got to be honest with what needs to be done and make business decisions that could be brutally honest and um, which affect the outcome of, of the job for the better. So if you're acting as owner builder, how do you tell yourself, you know, to the hard things? Because some people don't are headstrong in how they want to do it because they think it's going to benefit them, but that's not the benefit for the big picture and the overall outcome. So I've seen that a million times where, you know, how do you manage yourself and tell yourself what to do as the owner builder or the sub 
when you're out for your own best interest and you're not looking out for the whole project, big picture, it's, it's funny because I trust me, if you aren't uh, above it, kind of um, overseeing it as a professional would, you're going to make decisions that aren't beneficial to the overall outcome. And you won't see that until later on the, the possible decisions you make, which are because you're going to save money or time will bite you in the butt later. They always show up later, you know, because the decisions are cause ripple effects to everything else that's happening. And if you're not truly aware of what those ripple effects are, like we are as professionals, I mean, tried and true experienced professionals, you're going to cause disasters in the outcome if you don't know what that one decision is going to do to the end result. And we always, we know the, what those are because gosh, 35 years of experience in my case, I know exactly what's going to happen if something, somebody wants to cut corners or do this a, a different way than it should be done. The outcome comes out later and then you can't change it. And then you're stuck with it. And that's the sad part about owner builder and maybe not having the experience to make the decisions that affect the outcome. If you're thinking you're listening to this now and you've already realized that becoming being your own contractor or being your own project manager is not going to work and it's ridiculously overwhelming the concept of it. Maybe you thought about it cuz oh, I want to save money or oh, I'm here anyway, I can do it. So if you finally realized, oh my god, this would not be a good move and I have a life that I need to leave and I cannot be managing or micromanaging this project and I need to work for professionals work with professionals sorry the um you know so that the next thing is how do I find these professionals so that's another daunting task so when you find your professionals again it all starts with the plan so you get your architect or designer and you might get them through referral but you need an architect or a designer who listens to you because if you get architects and designers that want to do their design to make their statement, it's not going to work out for you when you live in your house. It's, it's like buying, having someone get you dressed in the wrong outfit that doesn't fit or doesn't match your personality or doesn't qualify for the, you know, you know, putting you in uh, the wrong outfit for the wrong event. So, you know, think about it. Your home is like has to be tailored to your, you, your personality and your lifestyle. That's the designer. But then when you go to pick a contractor, that person's building your dream home and probably spending more time in front of you because you physically see them for a year and you interact with them for a year. So my best tip with the contractor is, you know, like the person, like their personality and make sure you get references of what the experiences with other people were, because that's crucial. Mm. And, and, and then understand how they work. And are they going to give you a budget? Are they going to give you a schedule? Because by law, you get a contract with a budget and a schedule on it and draw payments. So make sure everything is transparent up front. But you really have to like the people you're working with and match personalities and know that you're going to get along on that just kind of human level, you know, because some people don't just don't get along, you know, because some people are, aren't, they just don't mesh well together. But the best thing about a contractor, I know this, um, uh, Barbara Cochran from the uh, Shark Tank. Her thing was <laughs> to make it simple to find your contractors. Go out and look at his truck and see if it's neat, <laughs> see if it's clean. <laughs> and that's a good one to start with. Seriously, how does he appear? How does the guy? Well, hey, I shouldn't say he. How does she? You know, you know the appearance of your contractor physically in a, and the cleanliness of his truck is actually an indicator of how organized they are. <laughs> so I thought that was a good one. <laughs> so this. First signal, if you, or if you're actually in this now and you're listening, and the first signal you have to, to tell you you've hired the wrong contractor or you've hired a bad contractor is number one, he never calls you back. Number two, he doesn't show up repeatedly. Number three, he asks for money in advance. Number four, he starts telling you his life personal problems and how hard it is for him to actually function in life. So you're hearing, I, you know, it's like the dog ate my homework. I can't come today. You know, I, I mean, you start hearing personal problems. That's a no, no. And, you know, he shows up looking disheveled. I mean, I'm not even going to go there, but I mean, I kind of joke around. He shows up smelling of alcohol. I mean, I'm seriously, 
there, I've seen it all, heard it all, but the, the really what happens with when you know you're in a bad relationship is uh, they don't call you back. That means they have no respect for you and they don't, and they show up late and they don't show up at all. So those are the red flags right there. You know, it's, it's huge. I mean, I worked in construction in the, in the eighties. So my reference to uh, bad behavior, I've seen it all. (laughs) So the moral of this story is owner builder beware. I don't think in my entire career that I've ever met anybody that's ever done this and thinking and thought it was a good idea. So everyone I know that's actually tried that it's turned out pretty bad. I've heard the stories. I mean, I've been around for 35 years. So my advice of course is owner builder beware. Don't do it. Just hire a professional. So if you're thinking about it, think twice. And if you want to talk about it and, and hash it out with me of why it's not a good idea, I'll be glad to tell you and point out all the pitfalls of owner builder. That'll do it for this episode. And I look forward to seeing you next week on the Julie Lawton Living Podcast. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Julie Lawton Living. For more information or to connect with Julie one-on-one, visit julielawtonliving.com. And don't forget, it all starts with a good plan.